Okay, greetings, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Capricorn Svamsha. Jaminy gives the results aquatic animals, things moving in the air slash planets, birds, demons, villages slash kapha, itches, defects slash guilt, and tumors slash joints. And that's quite a list. That's a very diverse list of attributes and it's the longest description that he gives for a sign. So we're going to break down all of what these, these different attributes mean, literally and sim, uh, symbolically. So first, before we get into the description of Capricorn Svamsha, what is the Svamsha and why is it the most important sign in our chart and how do we calculate it? We all have a unique path in life and we're all faced with certain challenges as we walk in that path. The Svamsha sign is indicating what the themes of those challenges are going to be. So finding that deeper purpose, that sense that our life has a meaning to us as individuals. We could be the most famous person in the world or we could be completely unknown. But the feeling inside of us that we're doing well in our life and we're following our inspired purpose. And that is what a healthy Svamsha feels like. And that there are going to be unique themes and obstacles that we face as we're on that journey, that unique individual journey we have. So the Svamsha sign is indicating what those challenges are and how well we're dealing with those challenges, whether we're in an unhealthy Svamsha path or a healthy Svamsha path. And finding the Svamsha is actually very easy. The first thing we do is find the planet in our natal chart with the highest degrees, excluding Rahu, Ketu, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So that planet with the highest degrees is called the Atmakarika, that's the planet that is informing our consciousness to the greatest degree. We are that planet and it's that planet has the greatest influence on us as, it, as an individual in the Jaimini system of astrology. And it is a profound planet and as I said, we are that planet. So how do we calculate this Famsha? Well, let's find that Atmakarka planet and let's use an example. Say that we have Saturn in Pisces at 21 degrees 41 minutes in our natal chart, where does that planet fall in the Navamsha chart? The Navamsha chart is when we divide each sign into nine divisions and then we assign a new, we, we'll, we assign a sign to each one of those divisions and then we create a new chart. Use the uh, graph in the description of this video and if you go on the left hand column, so we have Saturn in Pisces at 21 degrees, left hand column in Pisces, we follow to the right to the nine divisions and 21 degrees falls into that third to last division and we see Capricorn there, which means that Saturn is in Capricorn in the Navamsha or ninth divisional chart. In other words, Capricorn is our Svamsha sign. It's where the Atmakarika is in the ninth divisional chart. So if you have doubts about how to find the Svamsha or finding your Atmakarika, just put a question in the description of this video and I can help you out. Okay, so Capricorn Svamsha, why does Jaminy give such a complex and variated array of descriptions? Well, the reason is because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn is the planet of the psychological complexities that we feel within us based on the reality that we're limited in life. There are certain things we're just not good at and there is an end to life and that our time is limited. Saturn is the planet of time. So that idea of limitation, we all have it. And where Saturn is in our chart will show us where we feel limited, where we feel we're not good at something, what we create a sense of inferiority or what creates insecurities within us based on that sensation that we're, there's something missing. And a healthy Saturn in a chart is able to look life in the face and realize that life is hard and what am I gonna do about it? I can either sit back and just let things happen or and just kind of drown in that sense of being burdened as we all have a cross to carry and Saturn being that cross, that feeling that life is really heavy and hard and every day is a battle that negative, unhealthy sense of Saturn creates a life that is 
doesn't rise to high levels of accomplishment and success because of the sense of being overburdened. Whereas a healthy Saturn is able to do big things in life. It's able to climb high mountains. It's the planet of success because every day it's a, it's little by little every day being productive and uh, dealing with the fact that life is hard and how successful are we at it doing that. So Capricorn is a movable earth sign. Movable being the changes that, that we make in life, the, the ability to initiate and do something new. And then earth being the practicalities, the concrete reality on the ground. So the concrete reality is always changing. It's a sign of a lot of work. It's a sign of doing external things and involving oneself in the external world to a, a great degree. So an unhealthy Capricorn Svamsha is someone that is so overly focused on changes and things that are happening in the external world that they're neglecting their internal world. And slowly but surely, those psychological complexes build up. And it's going to be causing all of, all of this array of difficulties that arise within a person that we're going to talk about. So it's that it's the constant movement that causes a Capricorn person to, to, as I said, either neglect their internal world or be able to realize that their internal world is important. And so a negative Capricorn Svamsha, they can create this burden that they always have to be working. They always have, they become workaholics and they use work as an escape and it, the over-focus on external life. Whereas a healthy Capricorn Svamsha is able to do the work that is necessary that we have to do in life in a dedicated and pragmatic way that helps them alleviate stresses and helps them deal with the complexities and psychological complexities, not as a form of escapism, but as a form of doing little things correctly so that they can over, so that they can avoid, they can avoid what they're not good at or what they're not good at if they can't avoid it deal with it in a in a structured and uh, in a way that can have practical results that are essentially you are seeing that okay i'm not good at math but i have to do math in school i'm just going to do it get it over with and skip skip it and move on to something else and just do what needs to be done and not over focus on something that not over focus on your negative qualities or your limitations so that gradually can help you focus on what you are good at and focus on what you can do. So these can lead to very driven individuals and uh, ambitious individuals with a long-term approach in life. So Saturn is a, we're going to see the, the traits of Saturn inflected into these different descriptions that we're going to talk about now that Jaminy gives for describing Capricorn. So first, aquatic animals and that would be the last thing I would have expected as a description for Capricorn, aquatic. And notice he doesn't say water. He uses the word water for Cancer and also for Scorpio. So that's just water, but this is aquatic animals. It's a different, it's different. So what in astrology, water is, symbol, uh, is a symbol for our emotional world. And so what he's saying is that Capricorn Svamsha people are inundated with their emotional life always being present in their day-to-day -day interactions. So a challenge for these people is the reality that they're emotional beings and that they are very emotional individuals. They wouldn't like to think of themselves as that because they're so pragmatic and they want to be working out in the world. They're external. They're able to do, they're able to be changing their life, initiating things. They're, they're practically minded people. And so a big challenge for Saturn, for Capricorn Svamsha people is the acceptance that they are driven by their emotions. How are they driven by their emotions? Well, he, well, it's, Jaminy says animals. Animals are in this constant struggle for survival. And that fear of not having your ends, being able to have food and shelter at the end of the day is what animals deal with all day long. Yeah, we can say, besides pets in our house, that's all animals are really doing and thinking about is protecting their territories, making sure that their food source is protected, making sure that they're not being harmfully destroyed by the elements. 
So these are animals that are always in a survival state of mind. And that fear, being driven by fear to get those survival needs met. So what this is saying is that not only are Capricorn Swamish people driven by their emotions and that they are very emotional people, but that the strong emotion in them is fear of survival and that they will do so many things in life that are essentially rooted in that fear that they're not going to get their needs met and that they're not going to be able, they want to control all of these details and factors in life so that they can, at the end of the day, feel safe. So a healthy Capricorn Spamship person understands that they're emotional people, that fear is a part of the processes of making ends meet not, and being able to survive in a dangerous world, a harsh world, but they are not allowing their fear to take over as their main driving force in life. You don't want to be a fear-based individual. That's going to cause extra burdens and stress in your mental life, in your, in your overall path in life. So on the one hand, these individuals are going to be very, they're going to be very driven to get their needs met, but there has to be a balance and there has to be a not succumbing to the excessive amount of fear of, of just survival needs. And so w working on the part of their mind that is driven by fear, that strong emotion of fear is a huge challenge for Capricorn Sv Svamsha individuals. And so the next thing that Jaimini says is things moving through the air slash birds. Well, that's completely different from an aquatic animal. So right away we see this, this multifacetedness in the first two things that Jaimini says. So birds and things moving in the air, movable sign, moving in the air. In astrology, air is, is a symbol for our mental life, the intellectual nature we have, the changes that are happening, and our ability to, to put things together to, to be able to cognize the world around us. So what he's saying that these are very thought-driven individuals, that Capricorn Svamsha people are very much driven by their mental life and the health of their thought processes. And so this is a huge theme for these people. The constant thinking, the constant, um, we'll get into the anxiety a little in a little bit because it plays into it, but these can be very intelligent people. They're constantly um, evaluating things and they can be able to put a lot of pieces together at once. They're very intellectual people, so they can be highly intelligent individuals. And he says birds. So birds are flying and what are they able to do? They're able to see this big picture. They're able to see many things at once. So Capricorn Svamsha people, when it's healthy, are able to see many details of a larger plan, which can make them really good uh, managers, really successful people, because they're able to account for many moving parts all at one time. They're able to see that bird's eye view in a practical manner or in a concrete way. All of the variations or all of the, the small details that are happening. And this helps them see a the long-term vision of something, say if you've got a big project or a big plan, you're able to see how one step goes to the next and see that one you don't get to the finish line in one day. Life is being a marathon and you're going to have to have that bird's eye view to look down and see the, the big plan at work. So these can be big thinkers, big time thinkers and be able to really look at the world in a, in a, with a great magnitude that changes very slowly but surely over time. And that philosophically, again, it's an intellectual sign as being an, uh, things moving through the air. Philosophically, that can create a very, um, a person who's able to account for many factors that uh, they don't, they want to include many things at once and they don't want to leave anything out. So they can, have a very mature philosophy that leave, that allows them to incorporate many, many um, variables all at once. But on the unhealthy side, what this can do is can make a person when the, if their if their svamsha Capricorn svamsha is unhealthy, they feel like there are too many things, too many things going on to change anything at all. 
and that by looking above you see the magnitude of life how could i i'm just a small person how could i make any such change and that kind of pessimism and nihilism that that we're just you're just a small tiny cog in a machine that is has such a small effect that it doesn't affect the bigger picture at the end of the day everything is is, go, is going to be what it is and that may be true things are what they are but not allowing that to cause you to feel pessimism or realistic to the point of not having optimism and not being able to realize that your unique effect on the world makes a difference so being realistic but not being pessimistic in an intellectual capacity and having that big bird's eye view of seeing many things at once is a very important theme for Capricorn's Famsha. Many factors, many details. The next thing flying through the air, Jamini mentions, are planets because they are flying through the air. What does it mean by planets? Well, he's saying that the planets have a very strong factor in what he's saying is that the, the Capricorn's Famsha challenge is that the sense that you're being pulled by outside forces all the time and that life can feel very faded and that there's that there is little you can do with respect to your destiny or feeling that your life has has already been pre-planned and that can be good and bad but a planet in in uh, vedic astrology the word used is graha which means something that grasps or seizes something and pulls it around and, and carries it around so the planets are doing this to us in all different ways and so these individuals, Capricorn Swamsha individuals, can feel that they are being pulled by external forces at all times, which makes them feel that there's, they, are, they lack control. And so the theme of being able to understand what you're in control of and what you're not in control of, and being able to identify where are my areas of influence and control in life, and that the planets, the astrological forces affecting me, there are things that I'm destined to experience because of my past actions, my past karmas. And there are, because of those past karmas, I can alter them in certain ways, but I'm not able to change them completely. So Capricorn is really the sign of burning through karmas. It's the sign of working out past deeds because it's such an externally focused, survival-based um, sign where you are having to expend a lot of effort and, and will and uh, being productive in the external world as a result of having to work off other past actions. So it's the sign of feeling that sensation of fadedness. So on the good side, that can mean that your life has a, a very specific meaning to it and by your work, you're able to fulfill that meaning. On the negative side, it can feel that there's a destiny laid out that cannot be changed. And that interplay of what we change and can't play, what we can change and can't change becomes a huge factor in how well these people are able to work out their, their, uh, their purpose in life and feeling that they can live a meaningful life, that there are things they can change and there are things that they can change and feeling comfortable in that, with their place in the cosmos. And then the next thing that Jamini says is demons, demons flying through the air, these etheric beings that can cause a person to have negative thought patterns. So a Capricorn Swamsha individual is going to have to deal with the challenge of not allowing themselves to dig themselves into a negative thinking, a hole of negative thinking and destructive thinking and wanting to break things down and not build things. So that long-term path, if a person is not it, if an unhealthy Capricorn Svamsha, what can happen is little by little negative thinking is like digging a hole every day. And before you know it, there's a hole 20 feet high and that how am I going to get out of this hole? It's going to take just as long as the time to work yourself out of that problem. So with negative, that's how negative thought patterns work. They become a pattern. And the challenge is not to entertain those negative thoughts that demonic entities can that's what their influence is and so negative thinking is a really big challenge and seeing faults in things as i said saturn limitations it can become negativity seeing the things you're not good at 
and overly emphasizing those things instead of just dealing with those things and then focusing on what you are good at. So being able to be successful in that battle of negative thinking and, and rumination, overthinking problems is a big factor for, Capricor for Capricorn's Fumsha. Then Jaimini uses the word Keta, which means villages. And the translator Ernst Wilhelm gives one, one description of Keta, meaning stuck in a village of peasants, which is very interesting. And so Jaimini just says villages, that word Keta, but Ernst gives that, that really interesting description. It's a sensation of feeling stuck in a place where you don't connect with the people around you or simple-minded people. And that antagonistic feeling that I'm stuck around these common people and this is not where I belong. And Saturn, of course, is the planet of the common worker. So a Capricorn Spamsha person is going to have to deal with the reality that they may be a common worker, but the dissatisfaction with that. And there are not many famous people with Capricorn Svamshas or people that have become, have big names or notor people with a lot of notoriety. And it can cause that existential, that, that feeling that the world around me is not validating me and that I just don't connect with my external environment. And this can cause these people to want to move to new towns and feel welcomed and more connected externally to where they are. But again, not having so many people, famous people with Capricorn Svamshas shows that these are really people who are the behind the scenes kind of people who can really make things happen but aren't the big showy individual that gets all the credit. So on the healthy side of that, villages, so feeling stuck in a village of peasants or being in a place where you don't feel you're, you're comfortable in well, where, what is your unique contribution to that village, your, your context? And a healthy Capricorn Spamsha is able to find their unique place, even if they are still not a famous individual or not known for being, for being completely special in another way because society is built on the foundation of society are the daily workers, the people who do uh, menial jobs, jobs that plumbers, uh, manual labor. These are Saturnian jobs that aren't flashy, but they're absolutely essential. One of the main causes of, of society's advancement and the eradication of many diseases was plumbing, having sanitary bathrooms and the process of eliminating waste from houses in a safe way. You can't just live in a sewer. And so not only is the, is proper plumbing and maintenance of plumbing a very Saturnian job getting rid of waste? Not only is it, is it make society survive and increase the survival rate of society, and it's absolutely necessary, but it's a really a, a, not a validated job that should be validated more, but it's a very Saturnian thing. So it's not right out in front an obvious thing that you'd say we've advanced, but it's something totally essential. So a person needs to find out where they can contribute and if that contribution is not that that um, flashy kind of job it's still essential to the functioning of the whole of society so a capricorn spamsha person is going to have to be dealing with that struggle of i'm not maybe being validated i'm not being respected or validated for my contribution to my community and feeling that dissatisfaction but then being able to find out where they fit into the rest of society so that they can feel satisfied about where they are in, this, in the structure of all of human society. What's my unique place? And not having that, not make, needing that unique place to be um, so glamorous. And an unhealthy Svamsha will have that kind of desire to be extremely ambitious um, that working long, over a long period of time and wanting to be recognized, but then that recognition d still causes a dissatisfaction towards the end. And it still causes the sensation that something is still missing. And so it's a quite an interesting 
um, it's quite an interesting attribute that Jaminy puts in here. Um, but it can really cause a person to want to change their environment, want to go somewhere else where they do feel like they fit in. So the next word that Jaminy uses is kapha. And kapha is one of the three Ayurvedic doshas. It's kapha, vata, and pitta. Kapha is the, it's loosely associated with water, meaning the rejuvenating aspect of our, of our health and also the receptive quality. So Capricorn's Famsha people are very receptive people. And the challenge there is, am I too receptive? Am I not assertive enough? Am I allowing things to happen to me rather than putting a step down and say, putting my foot on the ground and saying, this is what I want. So ha being too receptive and too saying yes when you really want to say no is a very big theme for a Capricorn Svamsh person. Not allowing life to just sweep them away into a place they don't want to go. And before you know it, you're lost. And so that receptive quality can be very positive in when it's used in a way of stopping and letting things be, receiving the information in the external world around you, and allowing the pieces to fall as they may and then move forward again. So sometimes it's, sometimes it's best to do nothing. And that's a lesson of Saturn. And being able to, to realize that I'm not gonna be able to change this, I'm just gonna wait until this complicated situation is over with and then I'm going to step back into the arena of life. So being able to stop, rest, and rejuvenate these kapha qualities is an important theme of Saturnian person. So the negative side of being overwork and overdoing, and, but the positive side would be to stop working, rest, allow the work to settle, and allow yourself to to enjoy the the pleasurable things in life, and then go back out into the arena when you're finished. So. That's another challenge is it really plays into the workaholic aspect of Capricorn is making sure that you have a healthy relationship with how you're rejuvenating with your life and that you're not being overly receptive to outside factors and allowing too many things, having your defenses low, having too many things come into you and not being able to put a firm shield around you and say, this is healthy for me, this is unhealthy for me. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that aspect when we talk about Mars. Then Jaminy says itches. And it's the same word he uses for Gemini, uh, kandu, which amounts to anxiety. So as you can see, this is essentially one of the, the end results of a lot of the factors that we've been talking about. The psychological complexes and feeling of lack causing the overthinking. So a challenge for Capricorn's Famsha people, of course, is the, the overthinking manner that they can end up having if they're dealing with too many things at once, if they are constantly in a state of survival-based, fear-based work. This causes this buildup of tension and a lack of kapha or lack of self-rejuvenation. So it's another factor that it seems kind of a minor factor because we've already talked about a lot of major, it's kind of a secondary factor in a sense because yeah, of course anxiety comes with all of the things we've been talking about. So it's kind of a given that a Saturn or a Capricorn Swamish person would have anxiety or itches is what the symbolism is for it. And then Jamie says defects slash guilt. So this is a symbol for the frustration of the effort put forward. And these people can have the sense that they haven't done enough. They're feeling guilty for not having done enough or feeling guilty about for what they have done. And this can cause uh, the, the Capricorn Svamsha person to feel that they're some kind of, they're a fraud or doing things that are going around or trying to take shortcuts in life. And one of the biggest lessons of Capricorn is that slow move, Capricorn and Saturn is that slow buildup. A person with an unhealthy Capricorn, Svamsha, wants to always be taking a shortcut and that can lead to guilt. And at worst, the, the, uh, it's called uh, imposter syndrome, that you didn't really earn that. And so 
that sensation can be a very strong impulse that these people have, that they didn't earn what they, they worked for, or the, the, the guilt complex that comes in with feeling their limitations too closely, the, the sense that they're not good at things and feeling guilty that they're not good at things. So a guilt complex then comes into play. And the way to healthily deal with that in a healthy way is to, again, not is to essentially structure your life to where you're having a the realization that work is inevitable and that and that the effort you put forward is going to have some kind of result and that there life has very few shortcuts and that the more that you do what you, the more that you're following a structured way to achieve your goals the less you're going to feel, feel guilty at the end of the day for for uh, the people with imposter syndrome, you could say that these people, it's not really a syndrome, it's, a syndrome it, it, it's because you are an imposter. You didn't actually earn what you, what you were given. And then th there is a, a cost to that. You lose, th nothing in life is free essentially. And so that is what, um, that's what that can cause is the sense that, oh, I, I really, I feel bad because I didn't actually I didn't actually work to get that. Um, on the other side of that, um, it can cause a person to feel that life is unfair when they follow the rules constantly and they do the little things correctly over long periods of time, but then they see other people with a ton of success and that things aren't fair. I worked so hard to get there. And at the end of the day, all I got a, was a kick in my butt and a really small pay raise. So it can cause a, a person to feel that no matter what they do, life never seems to really improve or that they are they have this defect to them he uses defects and guilt so this defect is that i'm just not worthy enough and no matter what i do i'm always going to be a peon in comparison to all these other successful people well as i said life is built uh, society is built on the backs of hardworking anonymous people essentially how well are you able to Position yourself in a way that's satisfactory to your internal and individual individual drives in life to say that I am important and I, I have my life has meaning even if I don't have a great place in society. And so it's important that these people don't succumb to that pessimistic feeling that life is unfair. Everything eventually works itself out into balance. And we might not have the, the long-term uh, the perspective of uh, being able to see life from the the divine perspective as we're human beings, but everything has its place. Every person has a purpose, and we are all life is fair, even though it does not seem fair from our perspective as human beings. And the other fact is that life is unfair in a lot of senses, in the kind of immediate respect. And how do you deal with the fact that life is unfair? as I said, in the immediate respect, but in the larger scheme of things, it is completely fair. But it's that kind of complex, it's that kind of juggling of, of ideas that a Capricorn Spamship person is going to be dealing with. And then lastly, Jamie says tumors slash joints. So Capricorn is the sign of tumors, but it's not in the Navamsha chart where you show if you have tumors, i.e. cancer. It's in the D30 chart. But even if you have planets in Capricorn, it doesn't mean that you're going to have cancer. It's more complex than that. So it's the sign of tumors. And what a tumor is, or a cancer, it's acidity that builds up in a specific organ, an area of your body. So essentially, you have acidic and you have alkaline. And the body has to have both, and they have to be in balance. When things are too acidic, that's when uh, cancerous growths happen. And the growing up of, of acidic tissue is what cancer is, which eventually destroys the organ which causes a person to die. So what this is saying is that the toxicity buildup is going to be a very important part of uh, Capricorn Sfamsha in that not allowing a problem to slowly fester until it becomes a fatal, fatal issue. And that can be physically 
in a in something in a problem that is manifested in an area of your body because of negligence and the uh, ignoring of a problem that builds up before one day it pops out and it's a it becomes a major problem. So not allowing little problems to continually build up over long periods of time to grow into a big tumor. And getting at that root of that problem and fixing that, it can be a slight change, but it's a change that is gonna require long-term effort to improve. But it's, it's not being negligent of little problems that eventually build up. And that's a huge lesson of Capricorn and Saturn in general. It's the long-term practical steps that makes something great. Climbing the mountain one step at a time, not digging the hole one shovel at a time. So not being negligent of problems until they become serious problems. And then he says, Jamie, he says joints. And so what this can call joints, the, uh, the areas that connecting two bones. So an area of movement between two areas of our life, uh, that kind of that uh, section between two bones, a joint. And when joints have, uh, joints are essentially how well two areas in life or two areas of your body are flowing with one another. And joints that no longer have cartilage are rubbing against one another and causing pain. So it can, on one hand, cause the lifetime uh, obstacle of joint pain or can have arthritis. Uh, and again, it's not so simple as if you have this swamp you have arthritis, but the rubbing up against of joints and the pain that it causes, which can mean being a person that is too, uh, that can cause friction with other people and being too tough on other people and not having a nice fluid, uh, not having that cartilage in between of a protective barrier from your place and other people's place and not trying to butt heads with other people. And what it also means when, the, when there's arthritis or joint problems, the movement is strained. And what that really is saying is that Saturn Capricorn can be a very rigid individual and being slow to make a change and really boxy and, and, and not having that nice, suave, um, smooth movement through life. And, it can, and what it can mean also is stubbornness, stubbornness to change direction. So a challenge being the ability to adapt and the ability to make um, careful, cautious, smooth changes in life that are not causing friction with others, but finding one's place and being able to um, smoothly get into the most ideal position for you. So that ability for movement and not becoming an overly rigid and stubborn individual that is resistant to change because it's a movable sign. The healthier Saturn is, the more we can healthily move. The more unhealthy a Capricorn Svamsha is, the more resistant to change the person's gonna be, and that's gonna end up not just causing friction and pain in your own life, but it's gonna be rubbing against other people in, in um, destructive ways and not having that kind of uh, fluid movement and um, a, a slow adaptation, a healthy, slow adaptation. So at the, in the Svamshas, we always talk about the, the planets that are exalted and the planets that are debilitated to get a, an understanding of what a healthy Svamsha is and what an unhealthy Svamsha is. So the planet that is exalted in Capricorn is Mars and Mars in Capricorn, so a person with a healthy Svamsha behaves like Mars in Capricorn. And a Mars in Capricorn person is very cool-headed and strategic amidst external problems and as well as internal problems. These people can see many moving parts at once and not overreact to a single detail, but they're able to logically put together a lot of pieces and make incremental changes that are effective and efficient. So it's Mars is the Mars in this earth sign Mars that planet of fire and the, the planet of of getting your willpower and putting it out into the world in this in the slow moving planet Saturn sign in this earth practical sign is able to not become overcome by the fire and passion but to be able to have that cool that cool 
uh, under pressure kind of uh, mentality and that they are very um, kind of they're very careful but but efficient and effective with what they actually do and not allowing frustrations to take hold if something doesn't work take that slight adjustment and then attack what the problem is because Mars is about solving problems and uh, Capricorn signs are uh, well, Capricorn is a very much a, a sign of survivalism, overcoming the struggles in life, and that's what Mars is excellent at doing, overcoming the problems, but doing it in a way that is the path of least resistance, essentially. And so another healthy aspect of, uh, of a Capricorn's famsha as Mars in Capricorn is a karma yogi, so a person that their duty in life is to be doing things. And instead of a person who sits and does nothing and meditates and, and works on their ability to be calm, they're a person who ascends spiritually and has spiritualizations through work. And, a, and the realization that life is this long haul, it's this, it's this gradual ascension to accomplishing things. And so, for some people that is working hard every day, day in and day out to make the world a better place. And it doesn't improve automatically so having that healthy relationship with your work as an individual is one of the most important parts of a healthy Capricorn Svamsha and so another aspect of Mars and Capricorn that's very important is following following one's instincts and not overthinking a certain course of action Mars is that ability to respond to something immediately with a uh, with instincts so being able to do something as a as a reflex and so finding things in life that you're instinctually good at and extinct, instinctually what you do that doesn't require over, the overburdenedness of having your mental processes overworked. So having these healthy thoughts and healthy concepts of what I can do and what I can affect change in doing and being able to, be, being able to do them in an immediate fashion that doesn't require excessive amounts of, of thought. So a good, healthy Mars in Capricorn is able to, to be effective and to be able to make uh, changes in their life without the, the burden of, uh, of overthinking them, thinking too much about them. And also knowing what things you can change and what things need to be changed now and what things can be changed later or don't need to be changed. Having that distinction is also very important for, uh, for Capricorn Svamsha individuals. So the planet that is debilitated in Capricorn is Jupiter. And when Jupiter's in Capricorn, this we're going to say a few things we already kind of touched on, but it's the inability to see the bigger picture in life. Jupiter is that bird's eye view of life. And it's being able to see from a bird's eye view of how things are ordered. And Jupiter is a much more concept has more of a conceptual way of doing that, and but Capricorn ha, has this way of being able to point out small details in a larger scheme, but Jupiter debilitated in Capricorn shows that you're over conceptualizing something, which creates a belief system that is out of touch with reality, and also it means that. That would be a faulty way of looking with a bird's eye view, but also just the inability to see with a bird's eye view, too focused on the here and now, too focused on the immediate needs. Capricorn having that ability to see the larger details flying like a bird overhead can see many details at once. And that's a healthy Capricorn. But when Jupiter is in Capricorn, it's just being, it's not being able to see the meaning in small things and the meaning of the mundane details of life. Because Jupiter creates that belief system based on, uh, it creates the sense of purpose that we have. But in Capricorn, it gets too bogged down in the practicalities and not able to see at the, the, the deeper spiritual dimensions of life and that we can see spirituality in the everyday. So a Svamsha in Capricorn that's unhealthy is going to be too, too realistic, too pragmatic and unable to see meaning in small things. And the being able to, uh, the Capricorn Svamsha unhealthy, similar to Jupiter and Capricorn, is 
being able to un is be being able to detach your emotional world from the practicalities and realities of life because Jupiter is having this emotional intelligence that is able to see from a distance what their emotions are and how to use emotions in a logical way and being uh, logical about emotions. Emotions and logic are not are not different from one another. They're not two poles. The logical emotion react, emotional reactions to things help us to be um, help us to control our emotions and to not let them run awry. So, a unhealthy Capricorn Svamsha is unable to to detach emotions from the pressures of life and to be and is having a, their emotional world become this unintelligible thing that's pulling them in all these different directions as I said like the planets are doing they're taking us and pulling us in different places so what we want to do is have accurate concepts of what we feel and not be feeling burdened by the 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 fear of things not working out the fear of a long-term plan crumbling and being having a short-term emotional mind state that becomes overly simplistic and so we need to be able to not be it's essentially having a really faulty emotional understanding is what it comes down to as i said it's the water creatures the aquatic animals it's Capricorn Svamsha knowing that they're emotional creatures and that having a strong tendency towards fear-based emotions, but being able to come to understand those things. Jupiter is the planet of understanding. When you don't understand that you're, a, that you're, you're driven by a fear, you end up becoming a very nervous, anxious, tense individual that struggles to make instinctual changes and practical changes in a fluid way. So understanding one's emotional world is absolutely key and it starts with understanding that you are an emotional being and that a Capricorn Svamsha can have a strong fear-based um, fear based motivation. And one, one thing I want to end on with Capricorn Svamsha is a phrase that, it's one of my favorite phrases and it is, the reward for work is more work but higher work. So as such a, as a sign that is so much about the kind of anxieties and the kind of the external focus that can, that has to be balanced with the internal understanding of where you are emotionally and how your thoughts and the, how your thoughts are affecting your attitudes and the tendency towards negative thinking, all of those difficulties are playing into the realm of Capricorn of, of working in the world, that ex, the importance of the external actions that we do, the karmas that we do in this life. And maybe being a small member of society, but being an important member of society. Is that causing us strife? Is that causing us to have um, negative patterns of thinking and causing us to feel that we're not important? Well, doing good work being a, an effective, strong worker and being able to do things that have, uh, that have uh, practical improvement over a long period of time. The reward for doing things well over the long period of time consistently is higher work. So work that elevates you to a higher level spiritually, but also the freedom that comes with knowing you're doing good work and the automation that it comes. When you know how to do something really well, there is that sense of freedom that comes with I don't have to think so much about it and then I can take my work to the next level. So the reward for work is more work. And the only thing that we are, according to Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, the only thing we're guaranteed in life and the only thing that's due to us in life is the work we do, not even the results of the work. All of the results of the work are for God to enjoy. But what we are, what we are due in this life, the only thing that we are, uh, the, the word guaranteed, the only thing that we are, uh, the only right we have essentially is to work. And that's one of the laws of material reality that Krishna says. So by embracing that and being able to do our work, our individual work well, the reward for that is more work. And it sounds like this cycle, but the higher, the 
the more we the more work we get the work elevates and that work helps us elevate ourselves and to feel better about our position in the world so that is the path of a karma yogi being being uh, focused on the actions that we do and being able to have spiritual realizations from action and not necessarily being inactive and meditating but some people it's their it's their destiny it's their duty in life to be that externally focused person so hopefully all of these significations that Jiminy gives about Capricorn they're a bit complex but it's a very fascinating sign it's a very complex sign and knowing all of these different attributes you'll see that the Capricorn individuals can become overly burdened by these psychological complexes but hopefully these descriptions were able to help piece apart in ways that you can see the paths forward and the ways to to improve and make the Capricorn sign, uh, Capricorn Svamsha, have a healthy expression. As I said, it's best described to me is that the, the reward for work is more work, but higher work. Okay, thank you. Stay tuned for Capricorn's next sign, uh, Aquarius, the Svamsha in Aquarius video.